All right, so we're gonna move these beasts up to the top of the pasture there. Um, before we get any animals, actually before you do anything in permaculture in general, you gotta get your water system set up. And so we've run our 5,000 foot pipeline. Now we gotta get our water storage to the top. Once that's set up, then we can start plumbing it all in. And then we gotta go build a ramp pump, which is what's gonna fill this thing 24 seven. So uh, let's get this tank up to the top and then we can talk a little bit about how all the water systems are gonna work through the property. Okay, so a few weeks ago we ran this pipe and it is just an inch and a half HDPE pipe, so it's UV stable. It goes to the corner of the property. This is the highest place over here on the property. So at the bottom of our property, we're gonna have 40 PSI. Um, and as long as there's water in those tanks, there'll be enough pressure to, to fill um, watering troughs. So uh, the next step after we get the water into the system is we're actually gonna splice this pipe and we're gonna put in valves and quick connect couplings so that we can move the water with the animals and that way the animals are not walking to the water. There's always uh, fresh and easy access to water wherever we are. And right now the idea is that I'm gonna put about 24 watering points in this 5,000 foot pipe, which means that we have a lot of granularity to be able to choose really small uh, paddocks. And uh, one of the things that you can do to increase productivity pretty rapidly on a farm is provide that additional granularity so that you can uh, vary the amount of impact that the animals have on the land. Uh, one of the things that stops farmers or farms from doing that is not having enough water points. So we wanted to get this set up correctly on the front end. And one of the ways that we did this, so laying this pipe and bringing these tanks up here is all pretty easy. It's not that hard to do. Um, the hard part is actually creating a design. And so one of the amazing things about Google Earth Pro is that it's free. And with, this is only in the last few years that they've actually opened up all of the different features in Google Earth Pro. With the actual software itself, now you have the ability to draw lines and, um, and polygons. And the lines actually allow you to quickly and accurately measure out whatever distance you want, whether it's for fence lines or for pipelines, it doesn't really matter. And, and so we were able to measure this whole pipeline out and get a really clear sense of how much of this poly line we needed so that we could budget it. And so if you want more information on how we do all of that, uh, we've got um, all of our open source tools available at vergepermaculture.ca and I'll put a link to the Adaptive Habitat Land Design Planner uh, in, the sh in the show notes below so you can, you can do this as well. And in future videos we're going to actually go through step by step on how to measure all these distances so that you can plan out whatever systems you need to plan out that's distance or area related. So we're going to go get the last tank and then um, I'm going to show one more little thing in the system that we're doing right now. Um, anywhere that there is this pipe at crossings, we don't really want to be driving over this with a tractor. And so we're actually digging trenches right now so that we can run these underneath our access ways. And in those trenches, we're burying or pre-burying uh, insulated wire so that we can actually run our electric fencing wire in that same trench at the same time because uh, we want to make sure we have a continuity between all fences uh, for our electric fencing needs. And that's how we're gonna manage our animals in all of these different pastures. Just one more thing on electric fencing. If you're already doing this, this is nothing new, but if you're new to this style of, uh, of grazing, electric fencing is pretty much infinitely scalable, which is one of the reasons that we're gonna use that from the get-go, because you can make whatever pasture size you want using that electric wire. And depending on the type of animal you're gonna graze, it's gonna depend on the type of electric fencing kit that you're gonna use. And so we have a variety of different kits, which we'll talk about once we finally get into the 
the grazing portion, but right now we're gonna be in construction for a little while. Okay, let's go check out the trenches down there. So wherever we've got gate crossings, this pipeline becomes an issue. You can actually shallow trench it in. The guy we got it from, uh, his company's name is Pasture Pipeline, sells uh, or has a shank that, that he'll come and actually plow this into the field for you if you want. But I actually really like having it exposed because uh, it allows me to put in as many splices as I want. Um, we're gonna have a splice over there at the other gate uh, which will actually bring us water for our garden. So we're gonna have an unlimited supply of water for irrigation uh, at pressure. We may boost the pressure as well. It depends on how many PSI we end up getting and if we need just a little bit more. But the main problem with having it above grade and having access to that ability to splice is that it's a pain in the butt when you come to these gates here. So we're gonna dig a little trench right here. This is just the man gate. We've got a couple of other gates into the, into the uh, corral over there. Uh, that one's a little bit longer and it only has to go down six inches so that we're not tripping over this or if we're driving lawnmowers or other tractors we're not going to compress this pipe down. Um, it can only take so many flexes before it starts to, to have an issue. Now the other thing is that all these fences are going to have electric, common electric wire going across them and obviously we can't have an electric wire going across the gate so we're actually going to put in uh, an electric wire underneath here to create continuity between the two uh, sides of the electric fence. Um, and so that's just gonna be an insulated line. You could literally use uh, Lumex if you wanted to, but uh, we've actually got an HDPE liner and then we're just gonna use high tensile wire, which will conduct the, um, the voltage for the electric wire. So we'll get this dug and then we won't have a tripping hazard and this pipe should last 30 or 40 years, which is fantastic. Okay, so if you found that useful, or you have any questions about any of this stuff, leave it in the comments below. I will see you guys in the next video.